the name of the new chapter we are going to learn is work life and leisure first let's understand about the characteristics of a city towns and cities which first appeared along the river valleys such as nippur and mohenjodaro they were larger in scale than other human settlements ancient cities developed when food became surplus to support a wide range of non food producers cities were treated as the centers of political power administrative network trade and industry religious institutions and intellectual activity cities supported various social groups such as artisans merchants and priests larger cities are called as metropolises they are political and economic centers for a large region we will be looking in detail about two modern cities as an example of metropolitan development so these cities are first is london the largest city in the world and the second is bombay one of the most important modern cities in the indian subcontinent in this image we see nippur which was one of the ancient of all the sumerian cities and this is the image of the ancient structure of mohenjodaro industrialization and the rise of the modern city in england industrialization changed the form of urbanization in the modern period the early industrial cities of britain such as leeds and manchester they attracted large number of migrants to the textile mills set up in the late 18th century so by 1851 year more than 3 quarters of the adults living in manchester they were migrants from the rural areas by 1750 one out of every nine people of england and wales they lived in london it was a colossal city with a population of about 675000 during the 19th century london continued to expand its population multiplied fourfold in the 70 years between 1810 and 1880 increasing from one mid city was full of clerks and shopkeepers of small masters and skill artisans of soldiers and servants of casual laborers street sellers and beggars apart from the london dockyards five major types of industries employed large number of people clothing footwear wood furniture metals engineering printing stationery precise products such as surgical instruments watches and objects of precious metal during the first world war between 1914 to 1918 london began manufacturing motor cars and electrical goods a large number of factories increased until they accounted for nearly one thirds of all the jobs of the city in this image we see a marginal groups we know that a great deal about criminal activities in this period because crime became an object of widespread concern law and order was a big problem philanthropists were worried about public morality the population of the criminals was counted their activities were watched and their ways of life was investigated many of those who were listed as criminals they were in fact poor people who lived by stealing lead from the roofs food from the shops lumps of coals and clothes drying on hedges in an attempt to discipline the population the authorities imposed high penalties for the crime and offered work to those who were considered as deserving large number of women were employed in the factories during the late 18th and early 19th centuries women gradually lost their jobs as technology developed and they were forced to work within the households 
a large number of women used their homes to increase the family income by taking in lodgers or such or activities such as tailoring washing or matchbox making there was a change once again in the 20th century women got employment in war time industries and offices large number of children were pushed into low paid work often by their parents compulsory elementary education act and the factory acts in this image we see police news a magazine which used to publish crime related information in london housing housing became a big problem in london when people began pouring into the city after the industrial revolution factory owners were not able to provide accommodation for their employees land owners put up a cheap and unsafe tenements for the new arrival people in 1887 charles booth a liverpool ship owner he conducted a first survey a social survey of low skilled london workers in the east end of the london and he found that as many as 1 million londoners they were very poor and they were expected to live only up to an average age of 29 these people were more likely to die in a workhouse or a hospital or a lunatic asylum it was estimated that 4 lakh rooms were needed to house the poorest citizens and for a while the better of city dwellers they continued to demand that slums simply be cleared away so there were many problems faced by the slum dwellers let's see about these problems problems faced by the slum dwellers first one the one room houses first the one room houses occupied by the poor they were seen as a serious threat to the public health they were overcrowded badly ventilated and they lacked sanitation second there were worries about the fire hazards created by the poor housing third there was a fear of widespread social disorder workers mass housing schemes they were planned to prevent the london poor from turning rebellious In this image we see Charles Booth a Liverpool ship owner cleaning the London a variety of steps were taken to clean up the London attempts were made to spread out the tenements parks were created and trees were planted to reduce the pollution large blocks of apartments were built rent control was introduced in Britain during the first world war to ease the impact of a severe housing shortage the congestion in the 19th century industrial city it also led to a yearning for clean country air many wealthy residents of london they were able to afford a holiday home in the countryside architect and planner known as abnesser howard he developed the principle of garden city that is a pleasant space full of plants and trees where people would both live and work between the two world wars from the year 1919 to 1939 the responsibility for housing the working classes it was accepted by the british state and a million houses most of them single family cottages they were built by the local authorities in this image we see the single bedroom cottages built for the people transport in the city the london underground railways partially solved the housing crisis by carrying large masses of people to and from city. the very first section of the underground in the world it opened on 10th january 1863 between paddington and farrington street in london to make approximately 2 miles of railway 900 houses had to be destroyed thus 
the london tube railway network it led to a massive displacement of the london poor especially between the two world wars yet the underground eventually became a huge success by the 20th century most large metropolises such as new york tokyo chicago could not do without their well furnishing transit systems and as a result the population in the city became more dispersed these new conveniences they wore down social distinctions and also created a new ones so this in this image we see railways underground lines and this photo shows us the construction undertaken between 1866 and 1870 of the metropolitan district railways underground lines which included the destruction of the houses social change in the city family had been a unit of production and consumption as well of political decision making in the 18th century function and shape of the family were completely transformed by the life in the industrial city women who worked for wages they had some control over their lives particularly among the lower social classes however many social reformers felt that family as an institution had broken down and needed to be saved or reconstructed by pushing these women back into the home men women and family in the city men and women did not have equal access to the new urban space women lost their industrial jobs and conservative people raided against their prisons in the public spaces public space became increasingly a male preserve and the domestic sphere was seen as a proper place for women by the 20th century the urban family has been transformed again the family now consists of leisure and consumption as the need for recreation increased among the working class cultural events such as opera theater and classical musical performance increased many new types of large scale entertainment for the common people came into the being working classes met in the pubs to have a drink in the 19th century libraries art galleries and museums were built music halls were popular among the lower classes and by the early 20th century cinema became the great mass entertainment for mixed type of audience in this image we see an amp politics in the city in the severe winter of 1886 when outdoor work came to a standstill the london poor exploited in a riot demanding relief from the terrible condition of poverty alarmed shopkeepers closed down their establishments fearing that 10000 strong crowds marching from the debt fraud to the london the marchers had to be dispersed by the police similar riot occurred in late 1887 this time it was brutally suppressed by the police in what came to be known as the bloody sunday of november 1887 two years later thousands of london dock workers they went on a strike and marched through the city large city population thus posed both threat and an opportunity state authorities went to great lengths to reduce the possibility of rebellion and enhance the urban aesthetics in this image we see the dock worker strike the city in colonial india the pace of urbanization in india was very slow under the colonial rule only few cities developed during this period and about 11% of the india's population inhabited the cities a large proportion of the urban dwellers they were residents of the three presidency cities bombay was the premier city of india 
It expanded rapidly from the late 19th century. Bombay and its history, the prime city of India. In the 17th century, Bombay was a group of seven islands under the Portuguese control. In 1661, Britain's King Charles II, he married the Portuguese princess and Bombay came under the control of British. The East India Company, it quickly shifted the base from Surat, that is its principal western port, to Bombay. Bombay was a major outlet for cotton textiles from Gujarat. Bombay became the company's major western port. Large quantities of raw materials such as cotton and opium, they were exported through the Bombay port. Bombay became, became an important industrial center in the western India. Work in the city Bombay became the capital of Bombay Presidency in the year 1819. City quickly expanded. With the growth of trade in cotton and opium, large communities of traders and bankers as well as artisans and shopkeepers they came to settle in Bombay. Establishment of textile mills, it led to a fresh surge in migration. First textile mill in Bombay was established in 1854. 23% of the mill workers were women. Bombay dominated the maritime trade of India till well into the 20th century. Railways expanded in Bombay and this encouraged large-scale migration into the city. The population of Bombay increased. In this image we see the machineries, housing and neighborhoods. Bombay was a crowded city. Housing was a major problem in Bombay. By 1872, the density in Bombay was as high as 20. Bombay did not grow according to any plan and houses, especially in the fort areas, they were interspread with the gardens. The Bombay fort area was the heart of the city. City was divided between a native town where most of the Indians lived and a European or a white section. European suburb and an industrial zone began to develop to the north of the fort settlement area with a similar suburb and cantonment in the south. Rapid expansion of the city resulted in crisis of housing and water supply. There was a sharp contrast in the housing style in Bombay. Working people lived in the Charles of Bombay. Mill workers lived in mill villages. Charles were multi-storied buildings which had been built from at least 1860s in the native parts of the town. Each chal was divided into a smaller one-room tenements which had no private toilet. Many families could reside at a time in a tenement. The chals were not hygienic because many people were living in the chals. They had to face a lot of problems. Homes being small, the streets and the neighborhoods were used for variety of activities such as cooking, washing and sleeping. Liquor shops and akharas came up in any empty spot. Streets were used for different types of leisure activities. There were magicians, monkey players and acrobats. Charles were also the place for the exchange of news about the jobs, strikes, riots or demonstrations. And at times, the jobber settled disputes, organized food supplies or arranged informal credits, also bought into important info. People who belonged to the depressed classes found it even more difficult to find housing and were kept out of many chals and they had to live in shelters made up of corrugated sheets, leaves or bamboo poles. In this image we see a chal. Town planning. Town planning in Bombay was a result of fears about the epidemic plague. 
City of Bombay Improvement Trust. It was established in 1898. It focused on clearing the poorer homes out of the city center. By 1918, Rent Act was passed to keep the rents reasonable, but it had opposite effect of producing severe housing crisis since landlords withdrew from the market. One of the ways the city was developed was through massive reclamation projects. Land reclamation in Bombay. Earlier project began in the year 1784. The government governor of Bombay approved of building of great sea wall which prevented the flooding of low lying areas of Bombay. The need for additional commercial space in the mid 19th century it led to the formulation of several plans both government and private companies for the reclamation of more land from the sea private companies became interested in taking financial risks in 1864 the back bay reclamation company it won the right to reclaim the western foreshore from tip of the malabar hill to the end of koloba by 1870s the city was expanded to about 22 square miles a successful reclamation project was undertaken by undertaken by the bombay port trust which built a dry dock between 1914 and 1918 and used excavated earth to create the 22 acre ballard estate in this image we see the famous marine drive also known as the queen's necklace bombay as the city of dreams the world of cinema and culture bombay appears as a maya puri a city of dreams to many people many bombay films deal with the arrival in the city of new migrants their encounters with real pressures of daily lives some popular songs from the bombay film industry they speak of contradictory aspects of the city by 1925 bombay became india's film capital producing films for a national audience the the amount of money invested in about 50 indian films in 1947 was rupees 756 million by 1987 year The film industry employed 5 lakhs 20000 people. Most of the people in the film industry were themselves migrants who came from cities like Lahore, Calcutta and Madras and contributed to the national character of the industry. Many famous writers like the Ismat Chuktai and Sadat Hasan Manto they were also cities and the challenge of the environment city development everywhere occurred at the expense of ecology and environment natural features were flattened out or transformed in response to the growing demand for space for in the cities large quantities of waste products polluted the air water and land a major challenge faced by the big cities all over the world was noise pollution industrial cities such as leeds bradford and manchester hundreds of factory chimneys spewed black smoke into the skies factory waste contaminated the waterways and land air pollution was one of the major problems faced by the modern cities By 1840s a few towns such as Derby Leeds and Manchester had laws to control the smoke in the city in this image we see air pollution